Welcome back to Nat FL. This is good news from Miami. Mel Kipper lastest mock draft. Miami Dolphins goes crazy, insane. Philadelphia big drama make us believe how far Dolphins have come. The most perfect scenario for Miami Dolphins in 2021 NFL draft, landing Jamar Chase and Travis Etienne completes offense. This is a deep dive, be patient and subscribe. Mel Kipper lastest mock draft. Miami Dolphins goes crazy, insane. This is the time of year where the rumors start spiraling out of control. With the 2021 NFL draft right on our doorstep, the misinformation that hits the airwaves reaches a fever pitch in the hopes of scrambling the picture for each of the NFL's 32 franchises and ensuring teams aren't onto each other's scent for intentions in the draft. You'll get some pretty crazy headlines as a result. And then you'll get whatever Mel Kuyper Jr. pieced together for the Miami Dolphins today in his latest mock draft. A crazy headline wouldn't do it justice. Neither would any adjective that comes to your mind, including, crazy, insane, or any other more extreme selection of the English language. Because in Mel Kuyper Jr.'s latest mock draft, which released today, Kuyper Jr. projected the Miami Dolphins to, wait for it, trade back up to the number 4 overall spot in the 2021 NFL draft order to draft tight end Al Pitts. The selection of Pitts itself is perfectly fine and would be an exciting selection. But for the Dolphins, who just turned the NFL draft order on its head at the end of last month with a trade back to the number 12 overall pick from number 3 overall before rebounding to come back up to number 6 overall, to trade up again for the number 4 overall pick would be, quite frankly, a complete waste of everyone's time. The Dolphins included, Kuiper projected the Dolphins to surrender 2022 second and third round choices to move up two spots from number 6 to number 4 overall and secure pits. If Miami were going to be that aggressive to land pits, would they not have just sat at number 3 and taken him there? Because the whole appeal of a trade back is to pick up extra draft capital. Miami secured future first round picks in 2022 and 2023, plus a 2022 third round pick, for their trade from number 3 to number 12 with the 49ers. But the subsequent move back up to move back up to number 6 cost the Dolphins ground in this year's draft order, they moved a fourth round pick and returned a fifth round pick from Philadelphia, plus a 2022 first round choice. So in keepers' eyes, the Dolphins would have moved back one spot in the draft order when it was all said and done and all they'd have to show for it would be a later pick at their disposal on day three of this year's draft and a 2022 second round choice being converted into a 2023 first round choice. So effectively nothing. The NFL draft is a crazy affair, but it is hard to believe things will get as crazy as keepers mock draft when the real deal starts in a few weeks. Philadelphia big drama make us believe how far Dolphins have come. It wasn't all that long ago that the Philadelphia Eagles were on top of the football world. Their young quarterback, Carson Wentz, had endured an injury and backup quarterback Nick Foles still managed spurred the team to a Super Bowl championship behind head coach Doug Peterson over the New England Patriots. But what has transpired since has been nothing short of colossal disappointment, the team has slowly crumbled away and things got so bad that the Eagles quite nearly cleaned house this offseason. Gone as QB Carson Wentz. So, too, is Peterson. But general manager Howie Roseman remains. And in the aftermath of the Eagles' major moves, one can't help be reminded of how things used to be in Miami. And just how fortunate the Dolphins are to no longer be in such a position. The latest out of Philadelphia spells a pretty gloomy picture. The Athletic released a report yesterday that outlined a bleak relationship between owner and the coaching staff. Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie demanding explanations for his head coach's decision-making process, even in wins. Tensions so high behind the scenes that separate departments of football operations had to be completely separated. A secret meeting between owner Jeffrey Lurie and then-defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz ahead of the Eagles' 2017 championship season one that seemed to indicate a potential coup in the building if the team crumbled early on that season. Politics pertaining to the team's starting quarterback, so much so that there was a rift within the locker room in 2020 as a result. These are not the makings of a winning program. And it wasn't all that long ago that the Miami Dolphins were in a similar position. Remember the clashes in the locker room regarding quarterback Ryan Tanhill with Brent Grimes and his wife Miko back in 2015? 
After the Dolphins' 18-12 loss to the Colts Sunday, Miko Grimes wrote on Twitter that she knew Tanhill stunk the minute we the Colts Sunday. Miko Grimes wrote on Twitter that she knew Tanhill stunk the minute we signed to this team but I tried to keep quiet so I didn't discourage her husband from believing in his team. Miko Grimes also wrote that she heard that the Dolphins' offense didn't complete a single pass in two-minute drills last week, and that the whole team hated Tanhill. How about the inter-office squabbles between former general manager Jeff Ireland and head coach Joe Philbin? General manager Jeff Ireland became disenchanted with offensive coordinator Mike Sherman and generally wasn't too pleased coach Joe Philbin wasn't doing anything to correct his offensive coordinator and close friends play calling or game planning. Ireland became more upset with the coaching staff the final two weeks of the season as what seemed like a certain playoff run collapsed under the weight of losses to Buffalo and the New York Jets. During those final two games, while the Dolphins underperformed on the field, Ireland watched from the press box or a club suite and complained about the job the coaches were doing. And Executive Vice President of Football Administration Don Aponte heard Ireland's complaints. And Aponte told Philbin of Ireland's complaints word for word. That's how the relationship between the Dolphins coach and general manager broke. The disconnect between Ireland, Philbin and Aponte wasn't known just internally at the team's Davy practice facility, but actually got around the entire NFL. Multiple sources have told the Herald they were aware of the break in the relationships. Armando Salguero, Miami Herald It isn't all that long ago that the baffling, embarrassing reports stemming out of Philadelphia were problems that pertained the Miami Dolphins. But, Credit to owner Stephen Ross, his latest regime change seems to be one that is the antithesis of all those struggles from the beginning of the last decade. The Dolphins are a team known for collaboration and communication. The vision shared between the coaching staff and front office is a mutual one. And the Dolphins appear to be reaping the benefits of it all. Tensions run high in the NFL thanks to a lack of job security. And while winning breeds security more than anything, the Dolphins are a team that has taken advantage of the long-term commitment Ross gave them to collectively push the team in the same direction. That may seem like common sense, but as the latest out of Philadelphia reminds us, it isn't. And not that long ago that infighting gripped the Dolphins, too. But not anymore. The most perfect scenario for Miami Dolphins in 2021 NFL Draft Landing Jamar Chase and Travis Etienne completes offense. There isn't a team in the NFL that has better assets than the Miami Dolphins, a franchise that has stockpiled draft capital to be used over the next several seasons. There's a reason general manager Chris Greer has the Dolphins in prime position to take over the league, collecting five first-round picks, four second-round picks and four third-round picks over the next three years. Miami is coming off a surprising 10-6 season and is the Buffalo Bills' biggest threat for the AFC East title in 2021. The Dolphins can close the gap even more by having an excellent draft, starting with the two first-round picks they currently have. Miami holds the number 6 and number 18 picks in this draft, setting the franchise up with the ability to draft a difference maker on offense and another week one starter in the middle of the first round. The Dolphins have enough draft capital thanks to the Houston Texans, to make a play at another difference maker in this draft and make the offense even better. This is part of the perfect draft plan the Dolphins need to execute in the coming weeks, one that will ensure an excellent second season for Tua Tungavailoa and get Miami to the playoffs for the first time in five years. Jamar Chase or bust, Miami was in prime position to select Chase with the number three overall pick, but it didn't need to select Chase that high. The Dolphins traded down to number 12 and added two first-round picks from the San Francisco 49ers, then used one of them to trade back up number 6 in the hopes of selecting Chase, basically adding a first-round pick to move down three spots. Greer read the draft board. The top three picks are going to be quarterbacks and if the Atlanta Falcons trade out of number 4, there's an excellent chance the fourth pick will be a quarterback as well, even if Atlanta stays at number 4 a wide receiver shouldn't be in the cards for the Falcons. The Cincinnati Bengals is the only team standing in the way of the Dolphins' pursuit of Chase. Cincinnati could draft Chase and pair him with franchise quarterback Joe Burrow again, but the Bengals need to protect their asset and improve the offensive line, tight end Kyle Pitts is also a potential play there. The Dolphins just need to sit at number 6 and dwell on the excellent odds Chase is going to be there. 
pairing Chase with Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, and Preston Williams gives Miami one of the top wide receiver units in the NFL, including a number one in Chase that can make Tungavailoa a star for a decade. Chase is the best wide receiver in this draft with the potential to change a game every time he comes down with a catch. He is just what the Dolphins need. Offensive lineman at number 18. This will be an interesting conversation for the Dolphins, specifically since running back Travis Etienne will likely be on the board when Miami is on the clock for its second first-round pick. There is no reason for Miami to reach for Etienne here, not when the Dolphins have to make sure Tunga Vailoa is protected up front. Adding an edge rusher would be ideal too, but the Dolphins have prioritized the offensive line over the past year. Austin Jackson in the first round and Robert Hunt in the second round in last year's draft were part of the process. Miami could use some more help on the right side of the line, especially since Tunga Vailoa is a left-handed quarterback. Hunt showed a lot of progress at the end of last year, but adding a player like Elijah Vera Tucker will be tough to pass up if they fall to number 18. Vera Tucker actually lined up next to Jackson at USC, so the two have some chemistry already, and he projects as an excellent guard at the next level with his strong punch at the line and his ability to dominate in run blocking. Vera Tucker is a strong play here if he's available. If Christian Derisaw falls to number 18, Miami would be hard-pressed to pass on him too. Derisaw has excellent footwork for a player his size and can start at tackle or guard in the NFL. Again this is all about protecting Tunga Vailoa, which is what both Vera Tucker and Derisaw can do. Trade for another first-round pick, draft Travis Etienne. The Dolphins have enough draft capital to trade back into the first round and draft Etienne, the number one running back Miami needs to complete an already exciting offense. The Dolphins can't bank on Etienne falling to them at number 36, but can package that pick and that number 81 pick to get back into the first round and land him. Miami still has a second round pick to spare, number 50. A selection the Dolphins can use to collect more picks in this draft. Miami just has a fifth round pick and two seventh round picks left. Since the Dolphins the Dolphins don't have many picks past the third round, Use the assets collected and move up to select Etienne, one of the most explosive running back prospects in this draft. Najee Harris would be tough to pass up here, but Etienne appears to be a better fit for an offense with fresh ideas under co-offensive coordinators Eric Studsville and George Godsey. Etienne can force his way through tacklers and has the elusiveness to make them miss, creating a big play in the process. His route running is very polished for a running back, an added weapon for Tunga Vailoa. Etienne is a player the Dolphins will want to get the ball to 15 or 20 times a game. The Dolphins have Miles Gaskin and Malcolm Brown in their rotation, but Etienne would be the number one running back in this committee. Even if the Dolphins want to ease him slowly into the league, Etienne will make an immediate impact in an already stacked offense. Trading up to draft Etienne is the final piece of the puzzle for Miami to keep pace with Buffalo's offense and score enough points to keep score enough points to keep the New England Patriots out of reach. The Dolphins have set themselves up to win now. They are built to make the playoffs in 2021 and this draft is blueprint toward making that happen.